Okay, let's get this Q&A going. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's gonna be a Q&A video. Thank you for all the questions. And earlier this week, I had done a bit of a spring cleaning even though it's not spring. I've consigned a few things, mostly clothing at this point because there are things that I'm kind of holding on, such as this jacket right here. This is a Chanel jacket that is a really, really beautiful, but I haven't worn it a ton, so I'm trying to like figure out all these things that I'm not sure in the unsure category and I'm trying to wear them just to see how I feel about them. It's a shame I don't wear it more, but anyway, let's get started with our Q&A. The first question is from T. Cabis. 129 since you have a gold mini kelly will you sell your huli mini huli i actually don't have a mini huli i think you're mistaken i do have a gold another gold bag but it is the della capillaria and let me just show you they're both in the same color in the color gold both in epsom actually now that i look at it on the viewfinder is it just a <laughs> is it me or is my mini kelly a little bit more cool tone if that's even possible let me see in real life is it different i mean they they will vary a little bit because um you know uh they are different batches of leather from two different times yeah i I mean, they're slightly different. I can't tell if one is more cooler tone than the other, but they are different. So your question was that now that I have this beautiful Mini Kelly, which is my holy grail, will I let this go? And I guess uh, you're asking based on the color. I don't have any intentions of letting this go yet. Yet. Why is that? Um, it's because I am after a Constance bag and the Constance is also a crossbody style and I will only make the decision whether to let this go when I get the Constance. Um, obviously those two will be a bit more similar because they're both more of a crossbody, sort of like more of a casual style. They both have um, some louder hardware like this one has this pretty um, large ring in front. It opens and closes like this. They are two different bags, however, but uh, for me, they serve more of a similar function. So compared to the Mini Kelly, it's sort of too different. That's why I, I'm not looking at it that way. But once I get a Constance, hopefully soon, a Mini Constance, um, actually, I don't know when I'm going to get it. I say that hopefully soon, but you know, we always say that. Um, so once I get a Constance, <laughs> it's on my wish list, yes, then I will be able to make a more informed decision. Um, there's nothing wrong with this bag. I think in terms of the aesthetic, I am more of a Constance. Constance bag is a little bit slimmer profile, so it will probably sit a little bit less bulky on me, which I prefer. It's a little bit more feminine, whereas this one has more of a casual, sporty vibe, which I think a lot of times doesn't really go with my aesthetic. Um, but otherwise, this is a wonderful, wonderful bag, and it's really, really cute. It's really well made too, so at the moment, I'm not letting it go just yet. Next question is from my friend Clara, Clara Zila. Are you considering getting the Chanel Kelly bag? Yes, I am. I definitely would have loved the opportunity to at least see it and try it on. But you know how it is, right, Clara? Um, especially in Vancouver, since you you your hometown is here the the stock is just so limited and i was already told at the beginning that uh, these kelly bags are reserved for vics which i am apparently not and i've known that for a long time but a lot of you think i'm a vic so anyway they are reserved for the vic so they have already been pre-sold a long time ago they've never even reached the floor i've never even seen one and even though I did ask about it, I was told that uh, they're not available. So I wanted to get one. I, at least I wanted to try one, but um, no, I couldn't. And whether they will come back in the future, because that's a rumor apparently, um, we'll see then if I can get one. Um, what do you guys think about the bag? I know it's a hype right now, so obviously a lot of people are going to have their honeymoon phases with it and 
are gonna want to get one regardless of the pros and the cons. I think there's this charm about this bag that is, you know, it has that feminine, elegant vibe, but it's also like, you know how Chanel, Chanel in general, aesthetic wise, it can be quite casual and still look really cool and it can still also be elegant. Like it depends on how you style it, which I, you know, that's why I favor aesthetically speaking Chanel over Hermes. Um, but with Hermes, of course, it's the quality, it's the leather and it's the craftsmanship that I really, really appreciate. Uh, therefore, they're both my favorite brands, but I am definitely considering getting it. I can't, I just couldn't get it. The next question is by Care Bazaar. Is Chanel popularity going downhill? Resale value not as good as before. The resale value definitely has declined, I will say. Um, just, is it decline in, in a sense that, oh, is it really downhill? I don't think so. I feel like the resale value in the past has definitely been more viral, if that makes sense. For instance, if there was any any uh, sort of like popular, um, sort of like, um, and you know how every season they have something that is like hyped up and everyone wants to get their hands on it, then those are like the popular items. And sometimes they even will uh, extend beyond the actual season, they will become even more <laughs> like resale value wise, even more crazy, such as I can give you a couple of examples right off the bat is such as that rose gold from 17, I think it's 17B, I can't remember now, 17 or 18B, uh, that rose gold, they call it the, ca it's the caviar, I mean, it's the caviar. There is a mini version, there is a classic flop version, but uh, essentially, even though it was called col the color gold, it was a kind of like a rosy gold color. That one, the resale value more than doubled or tripled, like it, it was crazy. Uh, another one is the pearl bag. At the time, it was still an expensive bag, but like for a fully pearl bag, even though there was no le not that much leather, it was only the under flap that was leather, it was very well priced. And even to this day, it's reselling for like three times the price. The retail price so um those are still viral and they're still doing very well chanel bags of course in general do tend to keep their value a bit better than other brands and especially even the non-viral bags but maybe they're just less viral now i feel um especially the regular bags not not those exceptional ones has it gone downhill maybe a little bit i think there is definitely the general sentiment that everyone's um, agreeing on the fact that Chanel prices have really, like there's so many invisible ceilings that it has crossed price-wise. Um, there are several quality problems and consistencies that are being seen across the globe. And I think it's maybe not a new problem. It's just that now that we are on the YouTube, on online, on the internet, that it's being known more readily, like people can find this information more readily. Maybe that problem already existed back then. Is it as prevalent? I feel like it's not as prevalent. It was still there, but it was not as prevalent. So maybe it has gone downhill a little bit, but I don't, I honestly don't foresee Chanel ever really like dying, like going downhill to the point where they're gonna die as a brand popularity. I don't think so. I feel like Chanel will always have its place in everyone's like very highly regarded luxury brand. The aesthetic alone, I think is already enough to be on that kind of status. Um, the history, of course, but the aesthetic is really just so special in my opinion. And so, yeah. That's my opinion on it. What do you guys think? Has it gone downhill? And uh, I think resale value has gone down a little bit, but it's just not as viral, I feel. It's still keeping value quite well, especially if you have gotten those items a long time ago. Next question by Miles and Sid. I'm running out of items to buy and still no first quarter bag in sight. Any advice? I feel like Australia and Canada are just some of the, some of the toughest markets availability and how limited the stock is compared to most countries again this is a generalization keep going at it like i feel like 
the thing is, it's not always about buying things, but you need to keep going at it as in you still need to keep nurturing that relationship with your essay and that nurturing comes with your shopping uh, history <laughs> with the store and with your essay. Um, there is obviously a huge component where um, if you have an essay that really does look after you and that's, that thinks about you and that thinks highly of you, that also is a huge component. I'm not gonna lie, I think that is in many, many people's cases, despite maybe being a difficult store or difficult locale to get bags, uh, they still get their bags, even though it's not easy, but they still get them. Um, so I feel like that's a huge part of the nurturing of the of the of the relationship is not just the shopping part. Uh, obviously, with the shopping, right? Like, if you're just looking at from a sh sh <laughs> like the spend perspective, buying things in certain categories are high, more highly regarded. That's just a general rule. Ready to wear fine jewelry, uh, those two categories are very helpful because they build a profile really quickly and also those are not things that sell themselves easily usually. They still sell themselves, <laughs> don't worry, they will sell themselves because people know, they understand that getting these offers mean that you have to spend so they still sell themselves but they are harder to sell themselves than other things such as shoes and scarves and uh, those things do sell themselves but much more easily uh, just because the price point is a lot lower but ready to wear and fine jewelry are not. I understand the anxiety like right before you even get an offer you just don't see it like it's not in sight right like you said but it could be just around the corner and also keep reminding your essay there's nothing wrong with letting your essay know that your intentions obviously is that you would you would love to get um, your dream bag right you don't have to invent a lot of excuses because it's your birthday this and that I mean those help but everyone has a birthday and everyone has an anniversary right like those things could be a coincidental thing like it could have just happened that they have a bag available when it's your anniversary but uh, those things don't really help it's more about you, your relationship with the essay, your love for the brand. And if it comes across genuinely, right? Like, not saying that you're not genuine, but I'm just saying like the intentions and the essay knowing about your intentions is also just as important. So I hope this helps. And like I said, I really hope that it's just around the corner. Uh, it also depends on what you're asking for. Like certain bags are just harder to get if you're very specific. Um, if you are a bit more lenient with the choices, that's also going to help. But I think at one point, if especially if you feel like you've been waiting for a long time, it is fair for the client to remind the essay that like, you know, you, you're still waiting for your dream bag. You would, you're wondering when that's possible, you know, like that kind of stuff that's totally a fair conversation to have. Any of you who have extra advice for Miles, please comment below uh, because we all need a bit of, just a little bit of like support from each other sometimes. All you, sometimes all we need is just like the faith and the sort of mental support from others to keep us going, you know what I mean? Next question is by Blue Saf. How much pre-spend <laughs> at your local store for the Mini Kelly? Hmm, good question. So this Mini Kelly, right? How much pre-spend? I can tell you that the pre-spend for this is super high. It's really not worth it in a sense. Like, is it really worth it? Probably not if you don't like the bag, obviously. That's a given. Um, is it worth it for me? I think... Okay, let's answer your question first. So my store, it is known that to get a Mini Kelly, you have to spend closer to five to one, sometimes more, to get a Mini Kelly. I know, that sounds crazy, I know. And personally, myself, even though I'm not sure exactly, but I I can tell you it's four to one or more. Like, I, 
like I said, I don't know exactly, like, is it 4.2, 4.5? Like, I just, I don't know the exact number. I just know that I spent a whole lot of money just for this bag. I am a long-term client at my store now, and I really feel the urge to support my local store. I just love giving my local community the business. That's why, for me, it's worth it, rather than to get from the resale market or consignment market, even though I probably am paying the same thing if I were just to get it in the resale market, but you lack the history there, right? I am no longer building a history with my store by going, buying from the resale market versus me having to spend just as much buying it at my local store. If, more, if not more, actually, I probably am spending more because that's four to one plus the cost of the bag. So essentially spending five to one uh, over five to one to get this dang bag, right? So it's more the intangible that I value, the fact that I have a long-term relationship with my store now and they know how, uh, what kind of client I am, the style that I have, my preferences. That's what I value the most. And so for me, that alone is worth it. Margaret MS, would you consider a light pastel color for a mini Kelly if yes? Uh, which combo in my unboxing reveal of the mini Kelly I had told you that I just had no expectations of color and combination I just wanted a mini Kelly I would pretty much accept 90% of offer combinations like if it was an exotic if it was a different color even black I would accept especially if it was on a paler color combination like your question is asking I definitely would have accepted those as well the only colors I would not have accepted is like orange or like purple. Those are just colors that I find a bit hard for me to style. Not that they're not beautiful colors. It's just not part of my color palette. Right now they have this new color called Gris Pal, which translates to light gray. That's really pretty because it's almost white. Kind of reminds me of how my um, classic flap and my uh, small coco handle. Gris pal at the moment is sort of like the color that I've noticed that is like so close to what I would like call perfect light color. Is it really a pastel? I suppose it is. Like it's a like light white pastel, isn't it? Um, but also bleu brume. Bleu brume seems very very beautiful. Like I said, the mini Kelly because of the size, I feel like I would love to have a rainbow color of Mini Kelly's because this is such a small bag, but for me, it's about... <laughs> uh, this is such a small bag that I don't mind it in any co almost in any color. Yen L, how do you get invited to the runway? I have no idea because... Was I invited to a runway a ready to wear show from your local boutique? Is that what you mean? Because those ones, you get invited as long as you are kind of like an important client, I suppose. Like if you do spend a lot of money on ready to wear and they know that you're going to be interested, or maybe they see you as a potential great long-term client for the business. Uh, sometimes they just invite clients that way just because they see the potential of them being clients that will spend a, a whole lot of money with the with the store so sometimes that's just that or sometimes your essay just likes you and they want to invite you to the next collections preview and that's how you get invited or you're just a very important client like i said <laughs> that's like enough for them to keep inviting you every season because they know that um you're probably the type of client that will just end up ordering a lot of the new stuff before everyone else sees them. But in terms of like fashion week, runway, those things, I don't know because I've never been invited to those. I would assume that if you show interest in the brand, like if you've been buying a lot of the stuff from the brand, but also that you are in a way knowledgeable and also have the online presence to show that you are serious about fashion and that you you portray yourself well wearing the brand in a manner that maybe the brand sees you being aligned to how they want people to look 
when they're wearing their stuff. I don't know if maybe having some connections to people that you know that go to the runway shows help. Probably it does. Um, and also just, yeah, being a socialite, I suppose. That, you for sure, you will get invited more uh, to these things. I am Alan Ma. What's on your next wish list? And I think there is a similar question by Geraldine Vance. What is on your, uh, your next Hermes bag on your list? So they're kind of similar question. Um, so generally speaking, my wish list, what's, what's in my wish list actually? There's definitely some fine jewelry involved. I am eyeing, and I've spoken about that a few times, I think. I've, I, I'm still eyeing a few pieces of jewelry from Tiffany, from Hermes, and I even started looking at Cartier. There is just some jewelry that I have tried in the past and I'm like, oh, kind of revisiting my thoughts uh, about maybe adding them. Uh, I take a very, very long time to add jewelry because I, I think very, 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 very hard whether they um, will be worn quite well in, in combination with what I have already and also if they are more like everyday pieces. I feel like for me, it's a lot of money to invest in fine jewelry, so I want them to be easily sort of incorporated into my everyday stack, I suppose. And if I can even just keep them on 24 seven, that would be ideal. Uh, right now, I, I guess aside from my necklaces and my bracelets, everything else I do remove, but I do find that if they're easy to put on, that's also a factor, right, that I consider. But especially if I could just wear them 24 seven, that's really helpful. So from Tiffany, I am looking, <laughs> obviously I'm being influenced. I'm looking at the hardware collection. Um, from Cartier, I'm looking at the Clash collection. There's two different reasons for me to approach Hermes jewelry. They are beautiful, of course, but it's also because I am pre-spending. <laughs> It's for the journey, right? For the nurturing of the relationship. So I'm looking at Hermes jewelry, but slightly more expensive line, right? The ones with lots of diamonds. So that's that's what I'm. Yeah, that's sort of you know jewelry. Fine jewelry is definitely on my wish list. It does take me a long time to kind of like really be thoughtful as to what to add. Like I don't just I don't want to just add all of them at the same time, right? For me, they are more methodical. And um, so far, I, I feel I've done a great job at adding the jewelry that I have been wearing a lot. There's maybe one thing that I don't wear a lot. And I can talk about that in maybe like a least worn luxury items video, which I plan to do anyway. Um, what's else on my wish list? Chanel? With Chanel, I still want the 22 bag. You guys know I've been, you know, since owning the 22 bag at the beginning of, well, not the beginning, but like at the beginning of when they first launched last year in June, I owned it. I had to return it, unfortunately, so I no longer have it. Now, I have been mulling at the idea of getting it back. So that's next on my wish list as well. And then Hermes, uh, since Geraldine asked about Hermes, uh, the Constance, the Constance Mini is definitely a bag that I would love to get. I know it's not that easy to get. Um, I don't know. If, do you have one, Geraldine, actually? Um, that's definitely on my wish list. And I was at one point interested in the mini size bolide. I think it's a really cute size to have in like a pastel color. I think it, that would be a great little mini bag to have in a very fresh color just to have something like that. There's some ready to wear that's on my wish list, which I'm still waiting for, but I, it hasn't arrived yet, both from Chanel and Hermes. I've been requesting a few ready to wear pieces that has just has not arrived yet or don't know if it will arrive or whatever. Um, those are on the wish list, but you know, those are always uncertain, I suppose. But yeah, thanks for the question, guys. And what's on your wish list? I'm really, really curious. Please let me know. Steph Louis, what are the pros and cons of your Hermes necklace? So this one, right? This one? 
pros and cons. Actually, this necklace is very straightforward. The pro is that it's a really good everyday piece. It's such an easy piece to wear. It's very lightweight, it's very comfortable. Um, even if it gets tangled with my other two necklaces, which I wear 24 seven, this whole stack, it untangles easily. And it's also a good price point. It's a great um, beginners, not beginners, but like it's a great entry level pricing fine jewelry piece that you can get your hands on. And it's just a, a very simple everyday piece. The cons is that if you're gonna wear this alone, I feel like it's a bit plain. I think that's the idea though, because if you like stacking necklaces like I do, uh, then plain is good. You want a few items that are sort of like plain on their own, but once you stack them together, they're really great and they're really beautiful. So I guess that's the thing. If you're gonna wear it alone, it's really plain. It's not much going on for it other than the, you know, how the Shendong is sort of like the sim one of the symbols that have significance for the Hermes fashion house. Maybe a con if you're really looking to resell it is that fine jewelry doesn't resell well in general. So you can find this necklace at a lower than retail price on the resale market, like on Fashion Farm, I'm sure you can find it and pay less than the retail. From Wally R17, what's next? What's your next bag on your Hermes journey? Like I said, I. I am interested in a few bags. I hope just because I want to complete the trio of quarter bags that I hope that my next bag will be a Constance and hopefully it won't be that hard to get because I hear that Constance bags are even more rare, just like the Mini Kelly are. Um, the Mini Kellys are. The Mini Kelly, the Constance, apparently we my store, my store doesn't get many of them compared to the demand. So apparently it's easier to get a Bergen and a Kelly, which is funny if you ask me. Kelly Nixta, can you do an updated video on how to wear your Hermes scars? You're so good at it. Yeah, I guess I could. Um, I already have two videos on how to wear the Hermes 90 centimeter silk scarves and I don't know, for me, it's just fun to just sit in front of the mirror and then start playing around with it to just figure out different ways. But at the end of the day, no matter how many different ways, I still have my favorite ways, I suppose. But I can, I can maybe try to figure out a part three. I'm also interested in getting more. I know I said that you shouldn't get more than one or two, but there is, an, there is at least a couple of scarf rings that I, I thought was really nice to have just to add variety that are different enough from mine that I feel like um, I should add them just to have that variety to play with, different ways to wear it. So maybe that will be a video that I can do in com in combination with new scarf rings, if that's uh, maybe a video that you're interested. Uh, I also got a request from a long time ago, I know I'm so bad, because like I said, these videos, these like styling videos and coming up with different, showing you different ways, they take forever. And I'm not even joking. They take forever to make because I'm literally <laughs> standing in front of this camera for hours just to like change and to modify the different ways that I'm wearing them. Um, and at the end of the day, my, my room is like in a total mess. Like you guys have no idea that 15 minute video that you're watching took me like 15 hours to make, you know, N not even exaggerating. So that's why it's been taking me a minute to do the, um, the one with the shawl. That's what I was asked a long time ago to do a video on different ways to wear the Hermes shawl, the 100 centimeter. So sorry, 140, 140, 140 by 140. So that may be a, a combo video that I could do next. But yeah, I just need time to do it and I need also the motivation. <laughs> uh, but thank you for the suggestion. I will definitely, I'll definitely have to do it. Yes. Dr. Purse Time, what Elmez items are on your wish list to help your purchase history for the next bag? Oh, okay. Everything helps your purchase history, guys. Like, I think at this point, 
um, because I'm a long-term client already, I'm quite an established client at this point that I feel like I don't stress about what I'm buying as much anymore. I just buy what I like, honestly speaking. But the, of course, if you're new and they're still getting to know you, um, it's a process. I had to go through it. Maybe I can talk about it um, like specifically about my early journey, I suppose, in a different video. But like when you are a completely new client, they're still trying to suss you out. Just like you are being nervous around what they think of you and whether they, they're ever going to offer you that bag. It's, it's sort of that tug of war where uh, they both don't trust each other very much. Like a new relationship any new relationship are there's they like each other but like they're testing each other and that's the same with your store now everyone's experience is going to be different some people have had great luck right off the bat and and that's great um it's not like that everywhere supposedly um i think they're more of the exception again with um generally speaking myself Nowadays, I buy anything that I want as long as I like it. Like, I just am always looking around, obviously, because I know that I have to continue to nurture this relationship and also building that purchase history with my store. But it's not always about the strategic items. Yet, I, do, I still do it because, like, I love their jewelry and I love their ready to wear and I love a bunch of different things from the store. I think the only things that I don't really buy much of is their furniture and tableware section because I don't need more of those, of those things. My home is cluttered enough and small, such small space that I, I don't have space for those things. Um, therefore, those are the only things that I don't really buy much of. But in terms of everything else, I love their shoes, I love their silk, I love their makeup line, um, I love their ready-to-wear, I love their jewelry. So all of those things I always will consider as long as I have a need for it. And I'm always looking, like every time they have a new collection, there's always a few pieces that will stand out that I will want to get. Doesn't mean I can get them every time, no, but I will try. I will always make it known that I uh, want them. And uh, like I said earlier, there is some super blingy, <laughs> very blingy um, fine jewelry that I have my eyes on and I'm just waiting for stock, right? I'm literally at this point just waiting for the stock to come in. Um, in terms of ready to wear, I'm always on the lookout for the outstanding piece that I feel like will fit in with my wardrobe. So yeah, those are the things that I, and silk, you guys know, I'm like the silk lady. I wear my silk many, many different ways, which I've shown you. So I'm always on the lookout for the next beautiful silk. Even though I don't, I actually technically don't wear a lot of them all the time because I have my favorites and I always stick to the same ones. But I, at this point, I am kind of collecting them because they're so beautiful that I just want to have the print. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Does that help? And also their new makeup line is coming up this month and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up buying a, a bunch of different makeup to try on. I'm not a huge makeup person, but like um, ever since I've known and I've known for months now that they are gonna expand their, their whole makeup range to include mascaras, um, eyeshadows, and um, there's gonna be eye brushes. There was something else, can't remember. But they're they're really like trying to expand a whole line, like similar to how Chanel has everything, um, including skincare. They're I think they're trying to do that, which is a great direction because they they do sell really beautiful makeup, guys. I love their blushes, their lipsticks. Those are really well done. The bronzer you can skip, honestly. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> you can skip the bronzer. But like, other than that, like everything else is great. Selena Sapla, hi Amy, what do you think of the new Hermes Spring Summer 2024 runway collection? That is a great question. I definitely had a browse through the collection and I've watched the video, but usually I have to study it a bit more to kind of put it together in a video, talking about each piece that interested me. Uh, but generally speaking, thumbs up, 
love 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 the collection what do i love about it so much there's maybe it's a spring summer collection i i'm a summer baby there's a freshness and remember what i said red is gonna be a huge color next year and when i saw that obviously immediately i was drawn to the red palette like all the models wearing the different red little um, tank tops and skirts and just generally speaking red outfits i thought it was exquisite i think there was some jackets too um and it's a summer collection so uh, to me summer is always my favorite season the pieces were very timeless in a way and still very cool it, it had an edge to it but also wearable at the same time i like the color palette i like all the different colors that was presented um lots of neutrals so easy to buy in but if you like red tons of red coming up um some pieces were quite interesting there were a couple of new bags the bags i don't know if they were i mean that crazy i think um some previous collections have more new bags that were shown on the runway that was more interesting this collection was more about the feel like the way it made me feel when i saw the different outfits come out and it was color coordinated like each section and just very free like it just felt very effortless i think that's the word so i love the collection i would uh definitely study it a bit more and maybe talk about it in a different video maybe on the live stream but um i loved it i loved it. i'm really looking forward to seeing more reds on different brands hey guys i'm back i had two more questions that i totally forgot to answer because they were in a separate post but uh this next question is by joe and she wanted to know if the airpods pro will fit in the constance to go wallet so this is my constance to go filled with the things that she uh, wanted to know if it would fit well actually it does fit the airpods pro but i'm sure you would want to know if it fits more than the airpods pro right um so it does fit with a caveat uh, as you can see it has everything in it it does have my phone this is the iphone 13 mini see it is a smaller phone than the pro or the pro max but regardless, they would have some width, which essentially is what would prevent your bag from closing if you have too thick of items, which is why I wanted to show you um, if it fit with other things as well. So on the other side or behind it, I have lipstick. Yeah, this is a full size lipstick. I also have my car keys and AirPods. These are the AirPods Pro. This is the one that she wanted to know if it would fit. And below at the bottom bottom, I have a kind of like a lip balmy thing. So this is the Clinique lipstick or almost lipstick. And it's a thin little tube. And other than that, I also have four cards. I have some cash behind and I also have some cash in front. So as you can see, it realistically fit everything that I needed to go out on a day and I could also put some loose keys in it say your house keys in order to fit bulkier items and still be able to close you have to sort of fit them on top of the wallet because the top part of the wallet is where is the fattest or can expand the most if everything is stuck on the bottom which I'm going to show you, show you right now if I put everything and it's just all landing on the bottom let's say this car keys lipstick on top and then this so everything is sort of like the same items lined up in the same way as i did earlier but now that everything is at the bottom it's actually a lot harder to close it will still close but the trick is to make sure that everything is almost like on top so i would move the phone closer to the top and even these um, items right here, I would move, move it closer to the top, almost like reversing the wallet. Then it becomes a lot easier to close, if that makes any sense, because that's where the fattest part of the wallet is. So your things are still inside, but they are a little bit higher 
rather than all the way to the bottom because if it's all the way to the bottom then it puffs out too much and it's really hard to close so yes it does fit airpods pro along with my other things realistically am i really gonna bring my airpods pro when i'm just carrying a, a walk maybe not um i can see why you would need them especially if you're traveling and you're trying to figure out if this is a good traveling walk the lipstick and the airpods themselves have a bit of a width and they are rigid like it's quite bulky so it's easier when they're more towards the top of the bag and same with the phone especially i think most people would have maybe the iphone pro a few of you might have the max and with the max i feel like it might be even harder because then it would be taller then it would um, take up more space but yeah essentially you can play around with it it will fit to a certain point with all your other things inside i don't know if it's the easiest to close with airpods pro and other things uh, again the bulkier your items the higher it has to stay on top of your wallet that's what I found. Um, would I still recommend it? Yes, but only if you love Hermes. And um, yeah, otherwise, I do know that the Chanel Walk, which I have a whole video comparing the three, comparing this one, the Kelly to go, and the Chanel Walk, classic walk. Between the three, you're better off with a Chanel Walk. That one has the most space and will accommodate the bulkiest items better. The other question was from Tracy C updated handbag collection video that was her request so of course i'm not gonna do it on this q a but i will definitely do an updated handbag collection i usually do those towards the end of the year maybe i can do it a little bit earlier maybe towards november thank you so much for your questions again don't forget to follow me on instagram that's where i gather my questions in my instagram stories and it only happens maybe once or twice a month but it gave me a good idea of what you guys want to watch next collection video yes how to wear different more different ways to wear scarves yes let me know what else you want to see because i'm planning the rest of the content for this year so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it i'll talk to you in another video or in the comment section bye